We are here today to talk about rational exponents, which is just a, a fancy way of saying fractional exponents. In order to understand the rational exponent conversation, you definitely need to have covered radicals previously. There are two radical expressions that I'll talk about real fast to build the, the definition of a rational exponent. The square root of x to the eighth, this is, you're looking for the expression that is squared to get x to the eighth. That's a, that's a whole reason for the square root. Uh, we know that this answer is x to the fourth. And the reason it's x to the fourth is because x to the fourth squared equals x to the eighth, which again is always the whole goal of finding the square root of something is what gets squared um, to get to that the thing on the inside, the radicand on the inside there. Well, we understand that since we're going to square, raising something to the power of two means multiplying that exponent by two. So the whole game becomes just divide that exponent by two to take the square root. And then we build it up into higher order radicals with different indices. This is an index five radical here or a fifth root. In order to take the fifth root of this expression, we simply just divide the exponent by the index. I'm gonna write it out this time just so we can talk a little bit more about this, but this would be y to the 15 divided by five, which would end up giving me y to the third. And again, just to verify that fact, uh, and that's because if we take this, this y to the third, and we raise it to the fifth power, uh, we do in fact get y to the 15, because the power to power rule here says we'll multiply these two exponents together to simplify that expression. Okay, it's a quick review of radicals, but let's look at this version of the expression right here. This is gonna be our key to fractional exponents. You'll notice this actually, we think of it as division, but it's also a fraction. When you're looking at this right here, the denominator is the index of the radical over here. And the 15 is the, the exponent of this expression right there. So I'll just call this the exponent. In fact, the whole thing is an exponent, but we'll just focus on calling the numerator the exponent and the denominator the index. Well, if you look at this definition right here, let's flip this around. So I'll do this first and then I'll generalize it, is if somebody gave me something like y to the 15 fifths, I would know that this is the index and that's the exponent, and so I could rewrite it as the fifth root of y to the 15. And in fact, this is our general rule for dealing with exponents. The general rule for dealing with exponents is, uh, fractional exponents, if I have x to the m over n, the m right here will be the exponent, and this will be the index when I turn this into a radical expression. So if I rewrite this, this would be the nth root of x to the m. I actually can write that um, in a different order with the exponent and the index. I could apply the nth root first and then raise that to the m. So generally speaking, this right here is the general rule uh, for rational exponents or fractional exponents. Anytime that we see a fractional exponent, the denominator will be the index of a radical and the numerator will be the exponent that I leave on the expression. And again, the order with which I do that will not matter. All right, now we've established the definition of fractional or rational exponents. We have, if we see a fractional exponent, the numerator is an exponent when put in radical form, and the denominator is the index of the radical. It does not matter the order with which I put those in. Um, I have two expressions right here, eight to the two thirds and 81 to the negative three fourths. Let's attack these both separately um, and see if we can evaluate these by hand. First and foremost, I just wanna look at this and remind myself, the numerator here, this is going to be the exponent and the denominator is going to be the index when I write these in radical form. I'll do that now. So this is gonna be a radical or a cube root of index three. And then the two up here will be the exponent. Again, it will not actually matter what order I do these two operations, but I'm first gonna take the cube root to get two, the cube root of eight is two. Two squared we know is four. It's as straightforward as that. When I see a rational exponent, I'm thinking, oh, there are two operations going on here. There's an exponent that I need to apply and a radical that I need to apply. 
81 to the negative 3 fourths. So now I've brought in the idea of a negative exponent. This isn't too much of a trip. Remember, the negative exponent does not mean a negative number. It means the reciprocal. So I can actually apply this negative exponent to this expression, and it would look like this. That had nothing to do with the fractional component, but now I can apply the fractional piece. I can write this as the exponent and the 4 as the index. Again, I'm going to be down here in this denominator. So I have the fourth root of 81 raised to the third power. And now I'm going to do exactly the same stuff that I just did above to this expression, uh, except I'm going to be, have be doing it all in the denominator, and that's because that negative put me, or flipped me, and put me in the denominator. So we got the fourth root of 81 that I know is 3. 3 to the third is 27. So 81 to the negative 3 or negative 3 fourths is an ultra fancy way of writing the fraction 1 27th. And just a quick review, and any time you apply these the exponents with fractions, rational exponents, we treat them like any other exponents with the exception that when we need to evaluate, we apply the denominator as an index and the numerator as an exponent when we translate that into radical form.